Hey guys, this is Jade. So I'm um, excited to do something new, and I decided to do a video on Show Me the Money for. So, um, I haven't watched any of the previous seasons. I only watched like bits and pieces from last season because you know Bobby and B has on the show. But like I said, I've been watching it in full, so I decided to start something new with watching season four. So I guess I'll start from the beginning. So like leading up to the show, and I was excited to you know that this is gonna start a new season. And, um, I know that there's some changes with the judges, so YDG, Swings, and Illionaire, Doki and the Choir aren't on this season. So replacing them is, uh, Verbal Gent with Sani, uh, Palo Alto from Highlight Records, so he's on the same company as Keith Ape and Occasion, who are known for the song Ichima. In other songs, but the song I got them really, you know, really popular last year was Ichima. And along with him is Zico. And I'm guessing replacing the Illionaire team, or maybe a body G. I don't know who replacing who, but another team that they added was J Park and Loco, the AMG team. So with the judges, there was definitely talk about J Park's qualifications as a judge some people were like why is he there his raps was like you know subpar there was some people that weren't here for Zico either but I mean I am a fan of J Park I love him to pieces and I will say like out of everyone that's as a judge I will say his rapping is not always the best but I still like it you know what I mean? So obviously it's not on the same level as Sani and Tablo and Zico and etc. I get that. But I'm not sick on saying he's like a terrible rapper either because I don't think he is. But either way. But my thing was with Jay Park is like at the same time it's like you got to respect the hustle. I mean he was in 2PM. He had the scandal. He got kicked out the group. I think he got kicked out the group. But I don't want to hear that whole he left shit. But anyway there's a whole other story. So he went back to Seattle for a while, came back, went solo dolo, and all of a sudden just regained his career again and ended up eventually starting AOMG, which, you know, brings which brought us Loco, Ugly Doug, Gray, um, you know, and even Simon D, who's already established himself in the industry. But now he's like a co-CEO, so it's like another, you know, notch on his belt. And then it's like, at the same time, it's like AMG is one of the, like, most popular independent labels in Korea. So, you know, you, you can't really hate on the man's hustle. And I can understand, because I was talking with this with Shao D60. I think what makes J Park qualification of the judges, because not just because of how AMG came about, but not only that, but... You know, as a rapper, anyone can stand on stage and rap, but you got to give a performance, and I think that's what Jay brings. I mean, again, like I said, we're going to talk about skill. Like I said, okay, it's not the greatest, but at the same time, it's like Jay's not going to stand there and rap. I mean, anyone can do that. So I'm guessing, like, he does bring that, you know, charisma and stage presence when he is on stage. And I'm guessing that's what he hopes to do with his team. So, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? There's something different. So, like I said, so where everyone's probably going to be focused on, like, lyrical content and delivery and stuff like that. I'm thinking Jay's mainly going to, you know, someone give a performance. So, so that's probably why. And I don't know if people didn't think, you know, people weren't really feeling about Zico. But, I mean, at the same time, it's like Zico established himself main underground and mainstream and the fact that he's still doing shows on you know on the underground when anyone knows that he's the leader of block b so i mean i'm not surprised that he's the judge but i am surprised that they decided to have him as a judge right after his brother table decided to leave speed and decided to go solo and do show me the money that was surprising but anyways so home another story but anyways, um, so yeah, so we started the judges, and just another thing that people were talking about is just this abundance of idol, quote-unquote, quote-unquote, idol rappers. 
So, I mean, from to my knowledge, there's people like Kiddo and Yano from Top Dog, Ravi from Vix, of course. Uh, I think Juicy from Evil. I think the leader of Glam auditioned. Um, John from Monster X. I think they said Buffy from Mad Town auditioned. And just a whole, and I think it's like a couple of, you know, a few more I can't think on top of my head right now. And that's even, uh, I think, let me see. I think they said like a, like equal 42 idol rappers auditioned. Oh yeah, in um, Lime from Hello Venus. I don't listen to Hello Venus like that, but I was surprised that she had a history of being underground as well. But yeah, she auditioned as well. And yeah. So... Again, so this leads to my first topic to talk about is this whole underground versus idol rappers thing. Now, it's been this has been like this for years. Like, a lot of people from the underground aren't really fond of idol rappers. And they also aren't fond of people who are underground who decide to go mainstream. So, like, for example, Zico and Jungkook from BAP. I don't know if people really... I don't think people had anything negative to say about Top because if you know the story, Top was underground and then became Big Bang and Big Bang. So people don't really talk about Top, but it's mainly like Zico, you know, being the fact that he started off underground and now he's mainstream. Now, some people aren't really feeling that either. But honestly, I'm like this. I don't really give a damn if you're in a you know a popular group, a not popular group the fact that you're mainstream I don't care as long as you can rap and you have the skills to back it up that's all I care about being like I don't care like what I really don't care about the other shit that doesn't really matter to me and I don't know the you know I don't really understand people's some rappers like this like really people that people that really just dislike idol rappers and I know last year it was like OT versus BI. Like, he just was like, I hate idol rappers. Like, he was straight up, but like, I don't like them. I don't know why they're here. There's not a third. So, again, I don't understand the whole beef. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Why does it matter to you if they're an idol or not? I mean, I know some people feel like, you know, if they're on the show... The shine is going to be all on them. It's going to take away from, like, the people that struggle to get there. I can understand to a point, but it's just... The, I mean, I honestly think that some people, for the majority of the people that really don't like idol rappers, it's just pure jealousy. I'm not even going to bullshit you. Like, it's really just because they're popular and they're not. But let's, let's be real here. Let's not sit here and act like idols have it easy. Yes, Underground rappers struggle, nickel and diamond performing everywhere they can to get recognition is fine. I get that. I understand the struggle. But don't sit there and act like shit gets handed to these idols because we've heard of many stories of people barely eating, you know, only eating ramen because that's the only thing they can afford to eat, you know, struggling, having to do, you know, spend all day dance rehearsals, vocal rehearsals media training, learning another language, going to school, doing a whole spending the entire day doing a whole bunch of shit to be an idol. And there's people that have done this for years with an S years. So I don't really want to hear it when people say that think that idols get shit handed to them because this is not over here. Like over here there are people that can just get popping like that. That's not that's not how it works over there. People have to people have struggled to get to where they are. And I, don't, I really don't think some people that's in the underground, they, I don't think they get that. So just like they struggle, underground rappers struggle, I don't struggle as well. So, again, like I said, it really shouldn't matter if they're mainstream or not. Only if they just have the skills to back it up. And in most cases, some of them have had the, the talent to actually back up their talent. So, okay. So enough about that. 
So right, let's go start to the episode. So the beginning of the episode, they just finished up with episode one. So they showed majority of the um auditions. Um, they finished it up with, of course, Minnow and Taewoon's auditions. So of course, they weren't gonna have those in the first episode. No, they gotta have, you know, have people on their toes. People excited. Okay, what's gonna happen? Is that in third? But honestly, I knew that they were gonna pass because being the fact that I am a fan of Minnow. I am a fan of Winner, so I already know what Minnow is capable of. And the same with Taewoon, I am a fan of Speed, and I'm a fan of his solo stuff too, so I know the capability of both artists. So I know they weren't going to disappoint me. So that's pretty much said and done. So now I'm going to go to round two. So round two is where they have all the people that passed the first auditions, and now they're going to audition for all the judges. So... Pretty much is in the room, all four judges are by the stage, and they have to they have sixty seconds to show and prove. And if you don't pass within them sixty seconds, they fail in your ass and then you're eliminated. It's that simple. If you get a pass, you go to the next round. It's that's it's pretty simple. So first they had one from one punch. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I wasn't feeling one punch. When they first debuted, I'm like Low key, they was giving me crisscross. I just wasn't feeling the songs they was doing. And then it's like, if I'm not mistaken, I think Brave Sound kind of like put the group together. And I'm like, okay, honestly, like Brave Sound stuff kind of sounds the same. Like, I'm sidetracked for a second. Honestly, like the other day I was listening to, I saw the video for a sister's debut song, Push Push. And it sounded like a song could have heard on a teen top song on the album. I swear to God. No shade, but it was. So yeah, like I said, I, I, it's like, for me, Brave sounds like a hit and a miss. So when One Punch debuted, I was like, okay. I, I wasn't really here for it, which surprises to me because most people that I've heard that debut since I've gotten to K-pop, I liked. With the exception of Top Dog, it had to take me a minute. But other than that, I pretty much like people... From, if I first listened to them, I pretty much liked them like right off the bat. But when I saw his audition, it really surprised me, and I was here for it. I was like, okay, I thought he was, I thought his audition was really good, and I really did like his performance on in round two. So he passed, and okay, so the first person that failed was the uh, actor, well, rapper actor Kim Minje. I probably pronounced his name wrong, I'm sorry, but he was in The Producers, I think. But yeah, so of course when he went to audition, of course, they had mentioned, you know, him being a rapper and an actor. But then I'm like, okay, so what is YDG? A rapper and an actor. So, I mean, I don't know why they had to, I don't know why they were like surprised the fact that he was both. I'm like, okay, so was YDG. Anyways. So, um, so after that, next would be good old Black Nut. I didn't really know much about Black Nut prior to showing me the money for. I think I remember hearing about the song he did about Benzino, I think. I honestly think that he may have a bit of a crush on Benzino, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. So, when I heard about, because before the show even started, I heard of rumors of people's auditions and stuff like that. And, um... What happened? Then I heard that people were talking about Black Nut, that he, like, pulled his pants down, that he, like, snatched the clipboard from Zico, and I'm like, what the fuck is he doing? I'm sorry for cursing, but really, what the fuck was that? And so, when I watched the episode, again, I was like, what the fuck was that? Like, why would you do that? But surprisingly, that intrigued me. It, like, honestly, Black Nut is definitely comical, which isn't often... When you think of K-hip hop, because most, you know, people you think of K-pop is kind of like serious and, you know, like that type of shit. So I was really surprised with Black Nut. And like I said, he's very comical and I really do, you know, love his raps and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed his performance. So next was a student named Yang Hong Woon. I'm probably pronouncing it again. I'm sorry. So, when you first see him, he just looked like he just came out of school and just went straight for the auditions. 
Like, he wasn't, like, everyone else that went to audition, like, on, you know, wearing, like, bucket hats and wearing, like, chains and shit like that. No, he looked like he just straight came out of, like, chess club or something. But, he looks like, you know what I'm saying, looks are definitely could be deceiving because once he opened his mouth and he rapped, definitely shut me up because I thought he was really good. And the fact that he's only 17 and then the fact that he's only been rapping for a year... Definitely shows potential. So I'm, I'm going to look out for him. And the next is Basic. Um, I don't know much about Basic. But I know that he had debuted a couple years ago. But then he kind of like fell back from rapping for a while to like work at a company. I think it's like, I don't know if it's a family owned company. But yeah, so he decided to take, you know, some time off for that. And, um, and I guess he decided that he wanted to do what made him happy would be rapping. And... Honestly, like, he rapped, and it just seemed like he was rapping like he never left. So, I was really, so that really impressed me. So, I'm uh, someone else I'm going to be looking forward to. And then, next would be, okay, so we're going to go with a fail. So, Robbie. Oh, Robbie. So, when I first heard that Robbie was going to be on Show Me The Money, I'm not going to lie, I was surprised. Because I wasn't really feeling that quote-unquote diss he did to Bobby last year. I was like, okay, I mean, if you want to call it that. But I wasn't really feeling it. But either way, either here nor there, I was really surprised that he even auditioned. Because especially the fact that Vix is always, like, ripping and running somewhere. But I was like, okay. But then, you know, I saw his audition. And I thought he did good. Now, the, you know, the, the actual performance, I was like, mm, it was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great either. So I was like, okay, I can kind of understand why they failed him. But you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, you failed, you can always try again. So next would be Johan from Monster X. So, I mean, like I've said, uh, Monster X, I wasn't really checking for the asses in the beginning. I honestly wasn't like... YG kind of like ruined Survivor survival shows for me with like win and my uh, mix and match I was like pretty much done so I didn't watch No Mercy but I did see I did hear the song um, Coach Me with him, Sonny and Heron and I absolutely love that song that was one of my favorite songs from last year and that's what kind of got me interested in Monster X and then I also saw their debut uh, the video was a little all over the place but I definitely like the song and I definitely like the mini album I might get it you know not now but I plan on getting it soon but yeah so being the fact that I've seen what he's done before debut when they debuted and when he's on the show I was like okay I, I kind of knew what I was going to get from him and yeah, I I, de I mean I already knew what was gonna do, so I would I definitely enjoyed his um audition. <sighs> okay, and up. I don't know much about end up, but I do know that he does not like out of rappers, and he mainly does not like Vernon from Seventeen. Now, I'm gonna sidetrack from end up for a second and go to Vernon. So before. We saw end up audition. He made it. He made it known that he does not. Excuse me, like he doesn't fuck with idol rappers. He just doesn't, and he really doesn't like Vernon. Cause I guess so. They decided to before they started his audition. They showed Vernon's first, and they asked him why did he audition. So I didn't know that they sh um they shot this before Seventeen debuted. Cause it hasn't been long since they debuted. I don't think it's been a full month yet since they debuted. I could be wrong, but it hasn't been very long. So anyways, um, so they asked him why he debuted and he said, oh, I thought it'd be fun and it'd be, you know, exposure for the groups. Is that a third? So he was pretty much straight up about why he was there. So he wasn't, like most people there, they got something to prove. Vernon was like, look, I'm just trying to have fun with it. And that's pretty much that. That didn't sit well with Anda. So now I'm going to go back to end up. So they asked him why. And he pretty much said, he was like, you know, again, with this whole thing with idol rappers, he feels that 
you know, he wasn't take he didn't want to take it seriously where other people were. And, you know, that's, just, you know, and other stuff like that. Like, again, what I said before, like, he feels that all the shine would be on them and not on everyone else. So, like I said, pretty much going back to what I said about the whole underground versus idol rappers. So, so then they showed Vernon's audition. I mean, his performance. It was alright. It needs work. I mean, I liked his audition better than his performance. And surprisingly, I'm surprised he didn't, he went through it. I'm not even going to lie. Because, I mean, everyone failed him with the exception of Sonny and Verbal Jane. And I just thought that they were going to fail him, but they didn't. And just like them, I was surprised. I thought it was going to be like, okay, you failed. Like, it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. Like, it could have been better. But, um, I don't know why they decided to keep him. But, like I said, we'll see in the next round. And so they went to end up audition and he pretty much just went in on like, you know, his dislike for idol rappers. That was pretty much the whole performance. So yeah, so that was end up in Vernon. And I honestly think that this season is gonna be all about end up versus Vernon. So Vernon, sweetheart. Uh only thing I can tell you is you know, get up on your game, cause um, he's coming for you. That's all I got to say. So next, so um, after that, they showed Yano and Kiddo, but they failed. I was kind of bummed that they failed them because I really do like them from Top Dog. Kiddo was like my second prize after a time. So I mean, I was excited for them to audition because I know that they have history for the underground as well. So, but yeah, I was really surprised that, uh, that they failed. And this was going to be tough. So, P-Type. I don't know much about P-Type. Only thing I know is that he's CL's, you know, rap teacher. That like he taught her how to rap. But I do know that he's really, like, a OG in K hip hop and I'm like I was surprised that someone of his stature even went on the show. Like that's one thing that confused me about past seasons like people like Verbal Gent and Mad Clown and Swings. It's like I don't know why they did it. I felt like people of that stature don't have to do a show like show me like no show no shade to the show but that's like Beyonce doing the voice. Like why you are like people know who you are you have the recognition i don't know why you would do it i mean i'm not mad they did i'm just confused as to why because again people that are already well known for their skills don't really need to show like show me the money but anyways p type is on the show and he pretty much made it known that like the producers don't know shit about hip-hop and they probably don't and he was like, I, he's like, he really didn't give a damn if he passed or not. He just, he wanted to, he had a point to prove. But when he did his 60 second performance, I was really disappointed that he kind of, he, seemed like he fucked up his performance. He fucked up. He fucked up on the lyrics. And I'm like, it's like one of those like damn moments. Like, damn, you kind of wish it never happened. But unfortunately, he kind of you know, messed up on his performance and he kind of, he wasn't able to recover from it and they had to fail him and that was tough. I, that was tough to watch. It definitely was. So, hopefully if P-Type decides to come back next year, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll do better next year if he decides to audition. So, next is Michael Dye. Again, I don't know much about Michael Dot. Only thing I know is that I think he was like a child rapper. And I didn't know until I watched the show was that him and Doki rapped together. Now, I remember hearing that. I remember knowing that Doki's been rapping since he was like a teenager. But I didn't know that him and, my, him and Michael Dot were rapping together. So they were like young. I think like Michael Dot was 14, Doki was 17. And they were like kind of like the youngest hip hop duo at the time. 
So, yeah. So, and then I think, like, he, you know, kind of, like, fell back. And I guess he got older. And so, but I really did like his performance. And so, yeah, I guess another person I'm willing to look out for. And so, they showed Juicy from Evil. Now, I think she made, when she was on the season, season two... Yeah, she was, on season, she was on season three. She was on season two. I think she made it further on there than she did this season. So, unfortunately, they failed her. And, unfortunately, we didn't really get to see her performance. But, I know they said that she's kind of like the female Zico. Because, I know that she was going to start on with Block B. Now, I don't know if Evil is considered a Block B's sister group then. I don't know. But, unfortunately, I didn't really get to see her performance. Because, it was kind of like those, you know, quick hitter things. And, the next person failed was Casper and I don't know who Casper was until they said that she's Keesum's best friend and Keesum y'all know Keesum was on Unpretty Rap Star now I like Keesum so um again I don't know I think it's kind of like a P type situation where like she is good at what she does but in that moment she slipped up and she wasn't able to recover unfortunately and they had to fail her so yeah, so I think those are the ones that I saw that they showed that failed, that I knew of. And next is Little Boy from the Group Geeks. I heard of the Group Geeks, but I haven't actually heard any of their songs. So I didn't, like I said, I don't know much about him. Like, I'm pretty, like, I'm into K-Hip-Hop, but I don't know every single person because there are a lot of people that are in K-Hip-Hop. And I've been doing this for a really long time that I just don't know yet. I may have heard of them, but I haven't heard any of their stuff. So, yeah. So, he did really good. And his voice was, like, really loud. And I'm like, okay. All right, boo. But he did good. And he had an all pass. I think Tablo was, like, in love with him for a second. I was like, okay, Tablo. And so next we have none other than Taewoon. I was waiting for this one because everyone's been waiting ever since they announced that they were both going to be on the show. Everyone was waiting for them to be in the same room together. So of course they had to mention him and Zika, of course. I mean, it. it honestly, did you, did you think that they weren't going to mention him too? But anyways. Um, so he did his performance. It could have been better. I was slightly disappointed because I know what he can do. And I, and I agree with Zico. Like, it, it wasn't the greatest. So, yeah. So, like I said, hopefully in the next round he, you know, it, it's better. But, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great as I know, as I, like I said, I know he can do. And then next up is Han Hei. Han Hei is from the group Phantom. That's on brand new music, if I'm not mistaken, with uh, Sanchez. So they're in the group together. And if you don't know Han Hei, Han Hei is one of the founding members of Block B. So it was uh, Zico, Han Hei, I think Kyung from Block B, and I think another person. So that's uh, that was originally supposed to be Block B, but we already know that, you know, Minnow and Han Hei ended up not being a group. So it's just kind of crazy how, like, all, pretty much, like, majority of the people associated with Zeke's on this damn show. I mean, Juicy, Evil, Minnow, Han Hei, Table. Like, I'm trying to figure out who is on the show that wasn't affiliated with Zeke in some way or form. But, yeah. But, I mean, Han Hei's performance was good. I really did like his performance. So, again, I'm willing to see what's going to happen in the next round. And last but not least, good old huge boy, Minnow. Again, I mean, I love Minnow. I know what he's capable of. So, I know he wasn't going to fail me with this one. What kind of surprised me was when Jay Park failed him before he even opened his mouth. I guess he wasn't feeling the whole sore thing. But I kind of know, I mean, I know that Minnow kind of has like a playful personality and whatnot. So, <laughs> I got what he was doing, but I guess Jay wasn't feeling it. I kind of wish he kind of waited before he decided to fail him. 
But other than that, you know, Minnow did great. So again, came into the next round. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I pretty much I think I went through everybody that at least that they showed that I remembered. If I forgot anyone, just let me know. And the third episode is going to be very interesting because this is going to be the one-on-one -on -one battle. So I guess what's gonna happen next week? The uh they the rappers get the they get picked and they uh, they get picked and they for the one-on-one -on -one bound they get to pick their opponent and of course how M that works they decide to show end up first and who did he pick none other than Vernon and I'm like are we really fucking surprised we already know he's gunning for that boy so um yeah Vernon sweetheart you I hope you do well in this you know one-on-one -on -one. so because again we all know he end up coming for you. He's coming after you. He wants you gone. So I hope you do better than the performance you did in round two. And you do better in round three with these uh one on one uh battles. So yeah, that is it. I'm done talking about Show Me the Money for the second episode. Um again I can't wait to see episode three with these one on one battles. I'm trying I wanna know who's gonna go up against who. And from what I saw, everyone was trying to, before they um, showed and up pick Vernon, everyone was coming for Vernon. Like, they, I'm surprised that the attention went from Minnow to Vernon in like a second. So I feel bad for Vernon that like everyone just wants him gone. So, like I said, I see the potential and I hope that he gets to show it before they end up like somehow he ends up like leaving the show I hope he makes it far cause like I said I don't listen to Seventeen but seeing his audition I I, I, I see it I, I do see something with Vern I, I, wish nothing, I wish him nothing but luck and I, again I hope he goes far in the show hopefully and he gets to show his potential cause I, I do see it there and yeah so episode 3 is gonna be interesting and um, hopefully I can do a video on episode 3. Like, honestly, I, I, before I go, I want to just give a shout-out to everyone that's subbed these, that's been subbing Show Me The Money For, because I know everyone's been wondering, like, do we have to wait a whole week for the episode to be subbed? Because, obviously, majority of us, 